हेलो फ्रेंड्स अगेन वेलकम ऑन माय यूट्यूब चैनल माइक्रोबायोलॉजी बाय संतोष नपते आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर संतोष नपते वर्किंग इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी संभाजीराव केंद्रीय महाविद्यालय जलकोट डिस्ट्रिक्ट लातूर फ्रेंड्स इन लास्ट लेक्चर वी आर स्टार्टेड अबाउट दी सम कॉमन टाइप्स ऑफ फूड स्पॉयलेज एंड इन दैट वी आर सीन अबाउट दी स्पॉयलेज ऑफ मीट एंड मीट प्रोडक्ट्स पोल्ट्री एंड पोल्ट्री प्रोडक्ट्स और स्पॉयलेज ऑफ एग्स इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी अबाउट दी स्पॉयलेज ऑफ मिल्क एंड डेयरी प्रोडक्ट्स देन वी विल सी अबाउट दी स्पॉयलेज ऑफ फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल्स देन वी विल सी अबाउट दी स्पॉयलेज ऑफ सीरियल्स एंड बेकरी प्रोडक्ट्स एंड देन वी विल सी अबाउट दी स्पॉयलेज ऑफ फर्मेंटेड फूड प्रोडक्ट्स सो फ्रेंड्स इफ यू आर नॉट सब्सक्राइब दिस माइक्रोबायोलॉजी बाय संतोष नपते सो डोंट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब दिस चैनल सो दैट यू विल गेट नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ अपकमिंग वीडियोज सो टूडे वी विल स्टार्ट विथ दिस स्पॉयलेज ऑफ दैट इज मिल्क एंड डेयरी प्रोडक्ट्स सो ऑल ऑफ यू नो दैट देर आर सो मेनी डेयरी प्रोडक्ट्स आर देयर और मिल्क इज ऑल्सो यर एंड इफ इट इज नॉट कीप प्रॉपरली सो दैट मिल्क गेट और दैट डेयरी प्रोडक्ट गेट स्पॉइल सो हियर वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद दी सम कॉमन टाइप ऑफ स्पॉयलेजेस विच टेक्स प्लेस इन दी मिल्क एंड डेयरी प्रोडक्ट्स सो लेट स्टार्ट विद दी स्पॉयलेज ऑफ मिल्क सो ऑल ऑफ यू नो दैट मिल्क इट इज अ वेरी रिच मीडियम और वी कैन से दैट हियर मिल्क इज अ कंप्लीट फूड बिकॉज इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूट्रिय हियर सो फर्स्ट वील स्टार्ट हियर विथ रॉ मिल्क सो द फ्लोरा और नेचुरल फ्लोरा इन रॉ मिल्क इंक्लूड्स ऑल माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स विच आर फाउंड ऑन दी काउज हाइड सो दो माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स विच आर नेचुरली प्रेजेंट हियर दैट आर ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट इन दी मिल्क और दैट इज इन रॉ मिल्क सो दैट इज कॉल्ड एज दी फ्लोरा ऑफ रॉ मिल्क हियर एंड दैट माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स विच आर प्रेजेंट ऑन दी काउ हाइड दैट इंक्लूडिंग सॉइल एज वेल एज फिकल बैक्टीरिया दैट इज बैक्टीरिया और माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स प्रेजेंट इन अडर or in the milking utensils so that all these microorganisms they are present in the raw milk and that can includes these gram negative bacteria gram positive bacteria then yeast as well as that consist of molds so all these microorganisms they are present in the that raw milk and if that milk is properly handled and stored then and the flora of pasteurized milk is primarily of gram positive bacteria in raw milk all these microorganisms that is gram negative gram positive yeast as well as molds are present and when we handle that milk properly or if we store that milk properly then at the same time that flora of pasteurized milk it consists of mainly that gram positive bacteria so there are also presence of the psychotrophic pseudomonas so there is a presence of psychotrophic pseudomonas which are common in bulk stored raw milk that is common in stored bulk stored raw milk and that produces heat stable enzymes that can reduce the milk quality as well as shelf life of the milk so that is about the raw milk here so all of you know that this pasteurization process it kills most of the gram negative bacteria including pseudomonas then there is also killing of yeast as well as molds so this is the effect of that pasteurization on milk so that pasteurization it kills gram negative bacteria including pseudomonas yeast as well as that molds and some gram negative enzymes gram negative enzymes means here those enzymes which are produced by the gram negative bacteria then thermo tolerant gram positive bacteria and that spores they get survive in the pasteurization process and at the same time these psychotrophic bacillus species which are common in raw milk of the animals so this is the some basic facts about the raw milk or we can say here that is the normal flora of the raw milk normal flora mean is it means those microorganisms which are naturally present in the milk so these are the normal flora of the milk 
so the next point we will see here that is about the pasteurized fluid milk so here that's pasteurized fluid that pasteurization process or process all of you know that it is discovered by louis pasteur and this pasteurized fluid milk it is spoiled by a variety of bacteria yeast as well as molds so this bacteria then yeast and at the same time these molds they are responsible for the spoilage of this pasteurized milk and that milk it get frequently spoiled by aerobic spore formers for example bacillus species so these aerobic spore formers are responsible for the spoilage of pasteurized fluid milk and that includes bacillus whose proteolytic enzymes causes the curdling of the milk so this bacillus bacteria which is a spore former it produces proteolytic enzymes and that are responsible for the curdling of milk or that pasteurized milk then that molds they can grow on the surface of spoiled milk but the product is usually discarded before this occurs so that molds are also responsible for the spoilage of the pasteurized milk here so the next one is here that is butter so that butter it gets also spoiled and this it is it consists of or it has the high lipid content so here there is a high lipid content and low water activity it makes more susceptible to the surface mold growth than to the bacterial spoilage so because of high lipid content and low water activity of the that butter this butter it become more susceptible for the surface mold growth and that is as compared to the bacterial spoilage and there are some pseudomonas are there that can be become a problem so surface stent that is called as also that pseudomonas they are responsible for the surface stent or that is the putrid smell and this is caused by the production of organic acids that is by pseudomonas putrefaciens so this bacteria it is responsible for the surface stent that is the putrid smell of the butter and that is due to the production of organic acids so these enzymes so that butter butter fat there is a lipolysis it is caused by the pseudomonas fragile and that is most common in the butter so this is about the butter now the another milk product is here that is cottage cheese so the another milk product which get spoiled and that milk product it is called as the cottage cheese so here this cottage cheese it is spoiled by yeast so that yeast are responsible for the spoilage of cottage cheese that molds as well as bacteria they are also responsible for that and the most common bacterial spoilage in this cottage cheese it is called as slimy curd so that slimy curd which is caused by the alkali gene species so these bacteria these are responsible for the causation of spoilage in the cottage cheese and that spoilage it is called as that is slimy curd which is the gram negative aerobic rod shaped bacteria present in the soil water and the intestinal tract of the vertebrates then penicillium then mucor and other fungi they also grow on the cottage cheese and they import the stale or stiff flavors to the that cottage cheese here. so this is the diagram of that cottage cheese and it can be spoiled by this alkali gene species then it can be spoiled by penicillium mucor or some other fungi and that causes the uh, stale flavors or stiff flavors to the cottage cheese so the next one is here that is next milk product that is called as the ripened cheese so the milk next milk product is here ripened cheese now this milk product it has the low water activity then low ph and high salt that inhibit the most spoilage causing microorganisms so this high salt concentration in this ripened cheese that inhibit the spoilage causing microorganisms and but there is a occurrence of that surface growth takes place here also surface growth can be takes place here so that spores of bacterium that is called as clostridium butyricum then clostridium sporogens and some other bacteria they can germinate in these cheeses for example in sweet cheese with 
intrinsic properties which are actually less inhibitory for example there is a low salt concentration or there is a high ph and these organisms they can metabolize citrate present in that milk product here they can metabolize lactose or pyruvate or lactic acid and there is a production of butyrate or acetate plus there is a formation of carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas which blows the cheese or which can spoil the or blows the cheese here so that is about the that ripened cheese now the next point is here now the next we will see about the spoilage of fruits and vegetables so here we have completed that spoilage of milk and milk products now we will see spoilage of fruits and vegetables so as like that milk and milk products or that poultry and eggs or meat and meat products that fruits and vegetables they also get spoiled all of you know that if you if we keep that fruits or vegetables for more days in our uh, home so after some days that fruits as well as vegetables they get spoiled so here we will see about the which are the common types of uh, spoilages of fruits and vegetables so first we will see about the vegetables and generally for about we'll see about the typical composition of the vegetables so in vegetables there is a 88% water then 8.6% carbon that is cho or we can see here uh, that nutrients that is carbon hydrogen oxygen and it includes that mono and disaccharides for example glucose and maltose is present here as well as there is a complex oligosaccharides are present in food and these glucose maltose or oligosaccharides which are available to the fewer types of microorganisms here and that's why that microorganism they can grow easily on the vegetables then that vegetables they consist of 1.9% protein then there is a presence of 0.3% fat then 0.84% minerals and that vegetables they also consist of fat as well as water soluble vitamins and nucleic acids so the ph of most vegetables is around 6 and that is within the growth range of many bacteria so because of this typical composition of that vegetables that vegetables are more susceptible to the spoilage by different types of bacteria or different types of microorganisms now we have seen the typical composition of vegetables and because of these different components or nutrients present in the vegetables these vegetables they are good substrate for yeast molds as well as bacteria because whatever that nutrients are required by these yeast molds or bacteria all these nutrients they are available in the vegetables and it is estimated that 20% of all harvested fruits and vegetables for humans these are lost due to the spoilage by these different types of microorganisms so whatever that harvested fruits and vegetables are here out of total fruits and vegetables 20% harvested fruits and vegetables for humans these are lost due to these spoilers which are caused by these yeast molds or bacteria and these bacteria they can grow more rapidly so that's why they usually out compete the fungi for availability of substrates in the vegetables and that's why bacteria are of greater importance in the spoilers of vegetables with intrinsic properties of that food and that supports the bacterial growth and that intrinsic properties includes the that favorable ph as well as water activity or that potential okay so this is about the some uh, common factors which leads to the spoilage of foods now so the microflora of vegetables it is mainly consist of different types of microorganisms so that microflora it means that is the naturally present microorganisms on or in that vegetables here and that includes gram positive bacteria for example lactic acid bacteria that includes leuconostox lactobacilli and streptococci then these corniforms and staphylococci and that staphylococci that is coming from the hands of the employees during the processing of that vegetables and these staphylococci these are usually unable to proliferate but they can cross contaminate cross contamination can be introduced by them in other foods where the growth or growth conditions or the environmental conditions are more suitable 
for the growth of this staphylococci so now we will start the spoilage of vegetables and the first one is here that is called as soft rot so we will start with the spoilage of vegetables and the first spoilage is here that is called as soft rot so this soft rot it is the most common type of bacterial spoilage okay it is the most common type of bacterial spoilage and it is caused by the avenia keratohora and sometimes another bacteria which is called as pseudomonas species so these are the most common causative agent of the soft rot of vegetables and these bacteria they can grow at 4 degree celsius temperature so this softening it can also be caused by the special enzymes which are called as endogenous enzymes so that is the soft rot of the vegetables so the next one is here that is second type of spoilage of the vegetables that is called as mold spoilage okay so this mold spoilage in vegetables where the bacterial growth is not favored for example in case of if that food has the low ph then there is no favoring of the bacterial growth and it's uh, in such low ph there is a growth of mold can take place and that's why in such vegetables where there is a low ph is there that molds these are the main spoilage causing agent and most molds that invade the plant tissues through a surface uh, injury or through a surface wound for example through the bris or through the cracks on the vegetables and that spores these are frequently deposited at these sites by different types of insects so that insects then later on for that is uh, drosophila melanogaster or the common fruit fly they are responsible for the deposition of these spores of these molds on that sides of that vegetables and that's why they can enter into the uh, vegetables here which leads to the spoilage of vegetables so the other molds for example that is botrytis cinerea that causes the gray mold rot on a different types of vegetables and they are able to penetrate penetrate into fruits as well as vegetable skin on their own so there is no need of injury to the fruits or vegetables so this botrytis cinerea they can easily penetrate into these vegetables or fruits and they can cause the spoilage then the microflora of vegetables that will reflect the sanitation of processing steps because that microflora actually decides what what types of sanitation should be there or the condition of the original raw product and that soil borne microorganisms for example clostridia they are most common on the raw vegetables then that some species for example clostridium botulinum these are more concerned with the fruits fruits or vegetables and that should be focus of the processing steps which are designed to the destruction of these microorganisms now the next point we will see here that is sources of contamination so how that vegetables get contaminated so the next point we will see here that is about the sources of contamination means how these vegetables they get contaminated so the first one is here surface contamination and that is coming from the soil water air human pathogens which are coming from the manure that is from the night soil then another source of contamination of these vegetables that is including the harvesting so that hand picking versus machines they will also add the microorganisms to the vegetables then packaging it is also the another source of contamination that means containers which are reused so that can add the microorganisms to these vegetables and in marketplace also that is during handling there is a cross contamination takes place so these are the sources of contamination of vegetables now the next so here we have finished about the vegetables now we will see about the fruits so the average composition of fruits includes so there is a 85% water so there is a 85% water then 13% carbon hydrogen oxygen then 0.9% protein then which is low on nitrogen source here the next one is here 0.5% fat 0.5% ash and there is a presence of trace amounts of vitamins as well as nucleotides and less water and more oxygen than the vegetables so the 
and the pH of that fruits it is about that is low pH and it is 1.8 to 5.6. So this is about the average composition of the fruits. So that we will see about the fruits here. So fruits like that of the vegetables, these fruits these are also rich in different types of nutrients. So that fruits are also rich in different types of nutrients, but the pH pH of these fruits it does not favor the bacterial growth because the pH of that fruits is very low or it is 1.8 to 0.6 and that's why there is inhibition of the bacterial growth takes place and that's why because of this low pH there is a growth of yeast and molds this is more important in as compared to the bacteria so yeast and molds they can easily grow on the fruits here and there are so many genera of yeast that can be found on the fruits so here this because of these organisms they can grow faster than molds and that yeast often initiate or start the spoilage of the fruits here most commonly and therefore then molds they finish their job by degrading the complex polysaccharides actually that is they starts or they begins that spoilage of fruits here and later on that molds they do their job that is degradation of the complex polysaccharides which are present in the cell walls or in the rinds of the fruits here see this these are the different types of spoilage of fruits by the specific spoilage causing organisms the first one is here blue rot blue rot and it is caused by the penicillium that is related to the spoilage of fruits here see this is the blue rot of the one fruit here then second one is here that is called as downy mildews and this downy mildew it is caused by the phytophora and large masses of mycelium and that is takes place on the grapes see this is the spoilage of grapes here that is called as downy mildew the next one is here that is black rot which is caused due to the aspergillus and that is specifically takes place on the that onions see here this is the black rot here then next one is the sore rot which is caused due to the geotrichum candidum so these are the some common types of uh, spoilages of the fruits that is this last one is the sore rot now the next type of spoilage includes cereal uh, spoilers of cereal and bakery products so these products these are characterized by the low ph so these products they have low ph value so they these are characterized by the low water activity not ph value that is low water activity and when they are stored properly under the low humidity then there is a restrict all microorganisms or there is a inhibition of growth of all microorganisms except the molds okay so this Rhizopus stolonifer, it is the common bread mold. So the common bread mold, it is called as Rhizopus stolonifer, and the other species from this genus, they can spoil the cereals and other bakery goods or bakery foods. So these refrigerated frozen dough products, they have more water, and that can be spoiled by the lactic acid bacteria. Okay, so that is the cereal and bakery products here. Now the next we will see about the spoilage of fermented foods and beverages. So the next point of next uh, type of spoilage is here that includes spoilage of fermented foods and beverages. Now these fermented foods and beverages they have low pH or there is an ethanol content of this product. So the low pH of these foods as well as ethanol content of these products it does not allow the growth of pathogens so all of you know that alcohol we generally use for the surface sterilization and so the these fermented foods or beverages they have low ph and at the same time there is a ethanol present ethanol is present so that's why so this low ph and ethanol they does not allow the growth of pathogens but there is a spoilage can occur in this food products here so that we will see the spoilage of these fermented foods and beverages so the first beverages or fermented foods is here that is beer and wine so this beer and wine it has the ph of 4.5 and that can be spoiled by yeast and different types of bacteria so these bacteria which are involved in the 
spoilers of this beer and wine that includes lactic acid bacteria such as lactobacilli and pediococcus so this lactic acid bacteria that is lactobacilli and pediococcus these are responsible for the spoilage of beer and wine and when there is a condition is aerobic so in such anaerobic condi- aerobic conditions that acetic acid bacteria such as acetobacter and gluconobacter species they are responsible for the spoilage of this beer and wine so this acetic acid bacteria they convert ethanol to lactic acid in the presence of oxygen because in aerobic condition so this bacteria that is acetobacter and gluconobacter they convert that ethanol or which is alcohol to this acetic acid in presence of that oxygen here and the aerobic anaerobic bacterium that is called as megasphera cerevisiae or megas megasphera cerevisiae they can spoil beer by producing the acid as well as hydrogen sulfide so in this way there is a spoilage of this beer and wine takes place so the then next one is here that is beer so the spoilage of this packaged beer it is due to the growth of yeast and that is called as saccharomyces diastaticus diastaticus so this saccharomyces diastaticus it is responsible for the spoilage of packaged beer this generally grows on the dextrins so it grows on the dextrins that brewers yeast cannot utilize so that dextrins will be present here and that brewers yeast it cannot utilize these dextrins so this dextrin get available to this saccharomyces diastaticus and that causes the spoilage of beer and in either cases that spoilage by the yeast it results in the development of turbidity then off flavors as well as off odors so in this way there is a spoilage of that beer or packaged beer takes place now the next one we will see here that is about the wines so this candida valida it is the most important spoilage yeast present in the or causing the spoilage of wine so this candida valida it is the most common or important spoilage yeast which causes the spoilage of wines and that can that wines they can also be spoiled by the lactic acid bacteria which are able to convert that malic acid to lactic acid or that is called as malolactic fermentation it is known as malolactic fermentation and this malolactic fermentation it reduces the acidity of the wine so it reduces the acidity of the wine and that's why it affect the wine flavor so reduction in acidity of the wine it affect the wine flavor and in some cases or areas for example in northwest that wine grapes they have too much malic acid therefore this fermentation is deliberately used to reduce the acidity of the grape juice and that will be used for the wine production here okay so the yeast then molds and lactic acid bacteria they can also spoil fermented fermented vegetables for example sour crot and pickles as well as some other acid foods like salad dressings and mayonnaise so this can be spoiled by the yeast molds and as well as lactic acids that is lactic acid bacteria and these spoilers in fermented vegetables it is often manifest by the off odors then uh, the off changes in the color or texture of the product takes place here and in mayonnaise or in salad dressing the first signs of spoilers that are usually off odors and emulsion separation see here so in this way there is a spoilers of these fermented foods and uh, that is beverages takes place here so friends we have completed here that is about the different types of spoilages or common types of spoilages or spoilages of the different foods so don't forget to subscribe this microbiology by santosh napte and share this video with your friends as well as with your students thank you